Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Free Engineering School. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the bolted joint studies. Uh, in today's agenda, uh, we uh, will see the bolted joints, what are the types of bolted joints and the failures, appropriate failures in the assembly level and how we can model the bolted joints in abacus and uh, the respective abacus file uh, to freeload the assembly. So we will discuss about the bolted joints and their principles. So these bolted joints are mainly used to hold the assembly together and these joints will transfer the forces from one component to another component as you can see in this figure. Uh, there are mainly two types, uh, bolts and the screws. In the bolts, we can see the bolts are normally assembled by the nuts uh, that have a threaded portion into it. And uh, these, uh, in the bolts and nuts, the components are sandwiched between them. But in the screws, we don't have any uh, threaded uh, nut and uh, the screw itself while fixing or the installation, it will try to uh, create a threaded portion into it uh, to assemble firmly. As you can see in the bolted joints, normal uh, bolted joint nomenclature, uh, this is uh, the two plates which are uh, sandwiched between the bolt and the nut. So uh, the preload will extend. Uh, the compressive forces applied on the two planges and the post uh, tightening there will be a tension on the either side of the bolt and the nut. So basically the bolts will be failed uh, due to underweight or lower weight. If you uh, fix uh, very tightly, there will be possibility of uh, failure uh, due to thread, uh, uh, threaded for failure. And if you make it uh, uh, loosened, there will be possibility to uh, uh, the fail, fail, uh, failure cause. And uh, apart from that, there will be a, a shear failure and fatigue failure. Uh, can be happened due to the dynamic loading conditions as well. So basically there are uh, two types uh, in uh, bolted joints mainly uh, the partially threaded bolt and the fully threaded bolt where you can see the threaded portion will be uh, partially uh, threaded and in the fully threaded bolt you can see the complete uh, threaded portion throughout the bolt hand. And uh, you can see the nomenclature. I think there will be a, uh, there is a completely not visible this uh, nomenclature. But I will explain. This is a, this is threaded portion, and this is the nut, and uh, we'll call it as a shank, which is a unthreaded portion. This will be the grip length uh, where uh, the two planges will sandwich between them. So we'll call it as a grip length and this is the bolt loop. Uh, in this slide, we are going to discuss about how we can create a pretension section. Before going to that, we will just consider uh, the assembly condition, how it looks like and uh, the mainly we need to focus on how, what are the contacts distribution can be uh, happened in this assembly condition. So if you see the head and the top flange, there will be in contact will uh, create a contact between these two and uh, top planch to bottom planch another contact and uh, from bottom planch to nut there will be a third context so uh, these are the main important parameters to be considered that uh, the applied free load should be transferred uh, without any uh, error like if you miss the contact between the top planch and bottom planch there will be a possibility of only head to a top lens from top lens to bottom lens you, you cannot transfer the load since there is no contact between it and the second thing is uh, before uh, creating the pretension section we need to understand the section should be created at least uh, away from the contact region in order to uh, reduce the convergence issues and uh, we can simulate the better result of the free load conditions this is just a uh, basic principle to uh, go ahead with the creation of bolted uh, section. So I have taken the exploded view, uh, sorry, uh, the portion of the cut section view uh, into right side, where you can see the bolt stud has been meshed with the solid continuum uh, elements. Uh, 
uh, here we need to consider the two portion into the bolt length where uh, uh, one side we need to apply uh, the pretension section followed by the node uh, here we will consider the surface where the elements are uh, uh, taken and connected in, the, in this section uh, we need to take the elements we need to select the surface elements and we need to name it as a, a surface underscore name in the surface category and then uh, in the pretension section we need to give this surface which is created by the pretension section and followed by the node so that the for this particular pretension section and uh, the preload can be applied with respect to this uh, pretension node so these are the two major uh, uh, important key uh, factors we need to be add into your input file this slide will uh, navigate you to how uh, why do you need a bolts modeling in 3d instead of going for one dimension or two dimension so uh, there are uh, pros and cons uh, are included in uh, board, 3d bolded the main pros are uh, like a best simulation approach uh, for greater accuracy if you see for 1d and 2d there will be a accuracy level uh, percentage difference as compared to the 3d uh, bolted modeling and uh, for the condition of tensile bending and thermal loads uh, it can be easily transferred through 3d modeling uh, as compared to 2d or 1d dimension uh, here we can see the full stress distribution uh, in the head nut and the stud can be uh, easily calculated where uh, in 1d and 2d we cannot uh, make it but appropriate approximation can be uh, calculated but it is not accurately considerable in the structural studies uh, considering the cons side uh, if you are creating a modeling in 3d there will be a huge run time uh, due to we are using the solid elements 3d solid elements and uh, it will require extra effort to calculate the stud cross section stresses as well and the contact elements required uh, at head and nut uh, to uh, planch because we have uh, many contacts involving as I explained in the previous slide uh, here also if you see the four cylinder petrol engine uh, you can see there will be a contact between uh, head to that part A and then uh, there will be a contact between component B and component A this is the component B and there will be contact here and that is the top contact so there are uh, how much contacts you will increase that much uh, there will be a contact convergence issues or there will be a uh, solution time increment solution time increases so better uh, to make the convergence easy and uh, to run the simulation uh, very fast we can go for 1d or 2d to uh, where uh, the bolted are uh, bolted reasons were neglig neglected uh, in the uh, actual 3D structural studies, we will directly go and model the 3D board because uh, we need to understand what is the displacement and stresses uh, involved in the complete assembly with respect to board pretension as well. So this is this is why we will better to use a 3D modeling in the structural studies. Uh, here we will uh, discuss about the input file, Apex input file for. Uh, preload application so as i explained in the previous videos as well the abacus input file will have a mainly three compartments nodes and elements and uh, section material and contact properties and followed by the step so in the nodes and elements uh, you can see uh, there will be a pretension node we have name it under n set and uh, the surface in the pretension surface creation and uh, the section uh, properties uh, there will be a pretension uh,
code here pretension section uh, with respect to uh, surface uh, pretension section surface uh, and the pretension node so, so this will be the very important key factor you need to use it in uh, this section material and contact properties uh, along with these three we need to use the star pretension section so that we can the abacus will understand that uh, there will be a preload uh, uh, parameter can be added so by that uh, we have given the solid sections and material properties as a steel and uh, there will be a contact with respect to friction in the step it is very very important that uh, you can take the whatever assembly uh, structural studies first will be the bolt free load post that only the uh, other loads can be applied uh, so in the first very first step is the bolt free load if you are going to uh, simulate the bolt pretension to do so uh, we'll call it as a bolt free load conditions with uh, uh, providing a non-linear geometry s yes. use a static stabilized condition if you have a, a larger amount of assembly and we have a huge contacts involved in it as we can see the we'll con we need to constrain the assembly and uh, here there will be a important thing that uh, we have created the pretension section with uh, considering the pretension surface and the pretension node and for that pretension node we need to apply the uh, bolt free load by calculating the uh, bolt pretension that uh, that load is applied here directly so that it will uh, consider the applica applied a preload and it will try to uh, uh, transfer the transfer in the assembly so we can see how much amount of uh, load we applied and uh, what is the uh, total force uh, extraction in the node print in the dat file this can uh, show that the whatever amount of pretension load we applied and uh, at the end of the steps we need to see the whether the abacus has uh, completely applied the pretension load or not so this is the basic steps uh, before going to the for proceeding to the next step uh, is that the preload conditions where we are assemblies involved the uh, bolted joint studies so that's all about uh, today's discussion about bolt, uh, bolt uh, pretension creation. So please uh, feel free to write us if you have any doubts or comments to improve our uh, uh, discussion. And uh, thanks for now and have a good day. Bye.